I'd like some truce, you'll get your truce right now. Where is my truce? This is the truce thing tune. The truce usually follows the tune. Dum 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 truce. This is a new type of advert, isn't it? Close up with vegetables. It's ever since I've said we've got to eat vegetables. Someone explained to me that them saying like uh, fruit and vegetables make you live longer is a radical oversimplification of some information, right? So what they've done is they compiled loads of information going, vegetables, oh look, people that eat lots of fruit and vegetables live longer, right? But people who eat lots of fruit and vegetables also tend to be people who've got a lot of money because they can afford loads of fresh fruit and vegetables which are comparatively expensive. And if you've got lots of money, there's loads of reasons why you're likely to live longer. You're not dependent on an overstretched NHS, you're living in a lovely big house instead of <laughs> outside under a bridge or under constant strain and stress. You're not encountering stress and strain. But the, but the scientists took that information and said, eat more fruit and veg, eat more fruit and veg. You as an individual are responsible for your own health. Eat more fruit and veg. Well, they could have gone, hey, we need a society where there is more fairness because then everyone would have the kind of lifestyles that the people that eat a lot of fruit and veg have. So the scientists deliberately reached the wrong conclusion because the scientists want things to stay the same. It's not like a conspiracy, like, ah, ah, we are scientists. It's just there's a prevailing psychological order and people can't break out of that frequency because there's too many vested interests. The people that own these newspapers, the people that pay for scientific research, the people that govern the countries, the people that make the laws, all are in the same strata of consciousness, the same tribal link of consciousness and ideas. So new ideas can't break in. Government is just organised society for the best possible outcome for the biggest number of people. That's not what's happening at all, is it? Like, right, this is what's best for everyone. It's just a total blag. Ding! Complete protection for a healthy mouth. The number one brand used by dentists. Colgate Professional Survey. <laughs> That's amazing, I love that. Hi, it's Colgate here. Could you uh, like do a survey on what's the best toothpaste? Yeah, all right, it's, uh, it's Aquafresh. We're not gonna pay for that. It's cold cake. There's your buddy. <laughs> the mounting proof that tax cuts make all richer. How to get three times more juice from your lemons. <laughs> this actually is probably more useful information than anything else in here. A typical lemon cane contains three tablespoons full of juice. To maximise the amount, you can squeeze, roll the fruit in the kitchen counter, applying light pressure. This bursts the tiny little juice-filled cells. Then cut lengthways rather than crosswise. You'll get around three times more juice. Well, that's actually quite helpful. That's the only thing in this whole paper that's worth knowing. That's a lie, that thing about it's like cut taxes for rich people, that isn't true, but that is a good way to get lemons. They should put this lemon person in charge of everything. Having triplet sisters left me feeling like an only child. Well you should have looked at this. <laughs> There's three kids in the next room, you maniac. Oh god, I'm so lonely. Shut up in there! <laughs> Can I borrow your hair dryer? Can I touch you? I've crushed your Subutio figures! So lonely. Oh god, I need something to talk to you about. <laughs> Makes you ashamed to be British. I'm ashamed to be British. Don't think of yourself in those terms if it's having a negative. I'm British. Yeah? I'm ashamed of it. Think of yourself as something else then. If anything's making you ashamed and there's something you can do about it, do that thing. Britain's just a concept. Don't think of, if it's try, if you like being British, be it. If it's causing you to be negative towards yourself or other people, like some connoisseur of pessimism, stop doing it. Half of those caught out by benefits cap are spurred to seek work. I knew it. People on benefits, they're having the time of their life on those benefits. If we hassle them, they'll go and get jobs. Clearly, they just look for information that supports their worldview. The laundrette, 80 years old and still spinning. Well, what else is it going to do? Nothing. It's a laundrette. Laundry. We all have to do it, but few of us discuss it. That's because it's utterly mundane. <laughs> that was some truths from the Express. Let's have a look at the wisdom of good old Krishnamurti. The sculptor creates in marble, but there are other creative activities which work in materials less hard and stubborn than this. Let's arrange a few of these in an ascending order, starting from the densest. The sculptor creates in marble, the painter in pigments, 
the musician in sounds and the philosopher in ideas. But is the creativeness of the sculptor any less than that of the painter or the musician any less of that of the philosopher? In other words, does creativeness diminish as the density of the materials increases? Surely not. A great sculptor is in his own way just as creative as a great musician. The difference is solely one of technique, conditioned as all technique must be by the materials in which it works. Again, is marble as a creative medium any less liberative to the sculptor than words are to the poet or colours are to the painter? Is it less effectual in giving release through self-expression to his shaping and creative ideas? The answer is obviously no. The release is the same in all cases and is independent in itself both of the special technique and the special materials employed and so in a manifested universe also. If we start from the formula that life is creation then life must remain equally creative and therefore equally itself in every gradation of material density with which it may have to deal. All that these amount to is a series of different creative techniques and the difference of techniques as we have seen leave completely unaffected the creative release which takes place at all levels whenever a creative purpose finds expression in matter and form. This is the answer to that nightmare view of materially metaphysical aloofness beyond the utmost confines of manifestation. It is not simply some pallid universe into which the host of particulars can be resolved or dissolved. It is here a living energy in every concrete object. Pluck a leaf and there it is. Pick up a stone and you hold it in your hand. The world about us is no longer a prison house. It is open to the wind and the sky. Reality has ceased to be a stranger. It has come in all its purity to our very doors. I think sand is an infinite flow of creative power in all things, in all phenomena, in nature, in all matter, in us in everything and that we can't gradiate, judge it or place it in an order of significance and importance but recognise there's an interconnectivity within all things that there has to be an, an equilibrium and we also have to challenge our perception the way that we receive information and the way that we judge reality any system of stratification, any si system that mm, augments difference, that like uh, any hierarchical, class-based, structural system we have to look at anew. We can't prevent resources flowing between one another, spiritual resources, material resources, the necessary resources of life. We have to recognise that life in itself is an art form that we are all the creators of and we can create any sculpture, any symphony, any painting that we will. Let's create one of compassion, interconnectivity and love. That was some truth, that was some truth today. Dun, 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 hum, 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 hum.